This is the BYD Atto 3, an EV that's popping up on the streets of Sydney, Berlin and Sao Paulo. And more Chinese EVs like it are being exported to the rest of the world. In fact, Chinese car makers now account for half of all global EV sales. They benefit from access to minerals and the cost-effective supply chain built over years. And from 2016 to 2019, Chinese car makers received $28 billion in government subsidies. That rebate program was phased out in 2022. So now China is entering a new stage of EV adoption. The transition from a traditional IC to new energy era is still unstoppable. So I think we're still very hopeful, you know, it will bring a lot of growth opportunities for us. Car makers want to make inroads in smaller towns and rural areas. But to do that, pricing is key. The competitive auto market is in the midst of a price war, started by Tesla two years ago, showing no sign of slowing down. BYD, Xpeng, Geely and Leap Motor have all slashed prices to follow suit, raising questions over the sustainability of the strategy. When you look at the, you know, the intense price competition that you're seeing in China right now, that's not sustainable for any company. The price war that's happening, it's a Game of Thrones price war that's happening in Beijing. The record deliveries don't always translate into bumper profits. When BYD overtook Tesla as the world's top EV seller last quarter, Preliminary profits for the year were short of estimates by half a billion yuan, and shares slumped. With the lack of government funding and a slowing domestic market, EV makers that do survive will have to come up with even better, cheaper products, and sell to overseas buyers that may not be friendly to cars made in China. Linda Liu, Bloomberg News. All right, let's bring in Linda now, just did that piece. And also joining us is our guest from Beijing, Yu Chen Ding, head of China Autos Research at HSBC Shanghai Securities. Linda, I'll start with you. How might this price war really impact earnings for some of these automakers now? It's a really rough uh, time for everybody in the EV market right now. BYD is leading the charge uh, with slashing prices on a lot of their popular models. This is continuing a price war that was started by Tesla a couple of years ago. So it's really hitting the margins and profitability of these automakers now. BYD is the top seller, so they have some leeway to wage this war. But you can't say the same for some of these smaller players like Xpeng, uh, Li Auto, or NEO, whose sales are suffering, as well as you know, taking a hit from this price war. What, so, so we laid out the companies coming out with earnings this week. So apart from the actual numbers, is there any specific guidance or tone that you're looking to hear on the price war from executives as they talk to investors? Yeah, the executives actually met in um, Beijing over the weekend for this top um, level. Yeah. EV events, and um, they actually laying down some pretty ambitious goals. You've got the uh, car business unit uh, leader from Huawei who's saying they want to be the top player in offering uh, advanced assisted driver systems, uh, so having a lot of high-tech features and cars that are working with Huawei. And you've also got others like uh, NEO's uh, Robin uh, William Lee saying that, you know, we are trying to improve our battery technologies to make sure that customers are really getting good value from their cars, which is more expensive than some of their rivals. So you've got these um, top level executives trying to think of uh, new ways to attract customers in the coming year. Uh, Yu Cheng, I'll bring you in right now uh, on what you're seeing when it comes to these price wars. Are, are you thinking price cuts are likely to continue in this space? Yeah, I would say um, uh, China EV is mainstreaming. We are basically in the process of consolidation. So during the process of con consolidation, I would say the pricing pressure would be part of life now because um, the laggers probably struggling at a subscale might have to cut the price for um, more volume uh, just to stay relevant. And, um, and, and the same um, price action has been noticeable from the leaders such as BYD and Tesla. So this is part of life. But the key debate or the key watch here is uh, when you cut the price, can you boost the volume to partly mitigate the pricing pressure, what we've discussed earlier? Uh, you Chen David here. So you talked about volume then. What are your assumptions on how much they sell? And just put this also into context of 
the, the, the penetration rate, which I believe based on your report here, is at 43%. Yeah, so uh, our full-year forecast for the EV penetration this year is around 45%. Um, and also over the weekend, um, the chairman from BYD um, talks about in the EV event this last weekend that uh, in the coming three months, um, the high-frequency uh, high frequency EV data probably um, over 50% EV penetration in China. So we do notice a strong EV demand um, um, picking up um, starting from March, post the weak uh, senality in January and February, and partly uh, we've seen the, the wait and see consumers who are waiting for better price probably ready to commit um, their orders. And, and what does this mean for? I mean, the the the, the market seems to be quite concerned about the overcapacity in, in the EV space here right now, Yuchang. And, and and also when it comes to if you continue to cut prices, that's going to lead to more, you know, geopolitical tensions with the U.S. with the Europe. Uh, you know, European you know, markets as well. I'm just wondering, how, how should investors look at some of these concerns? Yeah, two part of the question. First of all, um, overcapacity, I think government um, stopped uh, issuing you uh, new EV uh, uh, production certificate uh, since 17. The problem is the existing uh, status quo is still simply too much. We have too many brands, too many models on the market, so the industry is due for the consolidation. We do notice um, there's some smaller player uh, reported to hot production and hot um, um, paying the employees and also many of other brands uh, uh, talked about uh, um, uh, cutting the capacity, existing capacity in China. So we've already seen the industry consolidation in the move, uh, on the move, and the, the market is basically um, the the key. Uh, the market mechanism is the key drivers um, uh, in the process. On the other side, uh, to navigate increasingly um, more complicated global trade environment, we do see uh, the potential in market supply could be um, a rather effective way to mitigate um, these. Um, um, uh, trade tension, um, as well as the tariff and FX risks. Uh, for example, BYD has been reported to open the new plant in, in, in Europe, in ASEAN, and also South America. Yuqing, this is Linda here. I'm really curious about what you think of Geely. It's an interesting company who just said that they aspire to be the Volkswagen in the new energy vehicle age. How do you think Geely is going to balance all of their brands to really try to come out ahead? Yeah, great question. But we're currently restricted on Geely. Um, but uh, to the topic about incumbency company moving uh, towards the electrification, we do notice um, this couple of incumbency name has been doing quite a good job by establishing a dedicated EV brand um, um, and, and uh, also actively uh, um, um, up, uh, employ uh, direct sell and also advanced driving assistant functions into their new vehicle. So uh, both party, uh, both the EV uh, pure play um, as a, uh, as well as the incumbency moving towards the EV going to remain to be the mainstream player for the EV playground. Hmm. Uh, you should, as a follow-up, I guess, to you mentioned incumbent, wh which among, among the stocks that you cover, among the companies that you cover, which one has the least visibility in terms of just looking, either that's a year ahead or five years ahead? Uh, yeah. Uh, a great question. I would say uh, the SOE incumbencies um, as a group uh, in general uh, is facing a more challenging environment in terms of the competition. Um, the ICE business has been um, 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 uh, contracting in terms of the profitability due to lack of scale and also severe pricing wall. Um, um, I would say um, generally don't fall and uh, uh, bike um, on our coverage uh, probably has uh, a bit of a rough patch to go through while uh, their EV business is still on the expansion phase, and uh, uh, while the incumbency profit pool has been um, uh, shrinking, and this has been um, reflected in the uh, reported 2023 earnings. And what does it mean for you know the number one BYD? Then I mean, obviously they 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 maintain that lead amidst this fierce competition. What is the next road for them? <laughs> 
Yeah, great question. So first of all, I would say uh, they have um, um, uh, aggressive uh, price action by introducing the budget version. So although uh, this could uh, prop sh uh, uh, th this should uh, partly pressure on the profitability, but on the other hand, lower entry pricing point also attract um, more demand. So the order book momentum um, and the increasing scale will help help them partly mitigate the pricing pressure and um, the continuous uh, um, uh, scaling in China would be the key focus and another leg of growth um, probably coming from the overseas market we talked about uh, BYD uh, um, has been expanding overseas and they have been expanding their uh, production over there and also given a rather more favorable competition environment in overseas market their overseas business has been yielding uh, much better margin than the domestic market so um, uh, domestic market um, we're also expecting in the second quarter the platform refresh which is supposed to drive um, uh, from the second half of the year another round of the product cycle refreshment. Hmm. Uh, Linda, question to you here. You have new entries. You have Xiaomi. You have Huawei, uh, Huawei entering the EV competition. And you, Chen, listen to the question because this also goes to you in a moment. Here. But I want to get your thoughts, Linda, on what this means for the, for, for the current players, of course, in the industry. So these tech giants entering the space is really going to put the focus on uh, high-tech fixtures and EVs. Uh, Huawei said that they want to be the top in advanced assistive driver system, and Xiaomi is really pushing this car ecosystem they're coming up with. They want to provide a seamless experience for drivers. You know, you can be listening to an audiobook on your phone, and the, when you enter into your car or pick right up, playing it on the stereo, so with these focus on technology is putting the pressure on market leaders like BYD who actually hasn't had such a big focus on these in-car technologies previously. So now BYD said that they're going to catch up and investing a lot more into the sector. And again, it comes back to profitability because these uh, developing these kinds of functions and features aren't cheap. So in the long term, if you want to stay on top, you've got to spend this money. Yeah. I mean, we saw what happened with Apple, right? Uh, mm. you, you, Chin, your thoughts on new entries and how the incumbents respond to these new entrants? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the broader industry context would be EV is increasingly commoditized. So smart EV is the next game changer. Uh, the technology entrance uh, Linda just talked about um, uh, does have a, a different, strong differentiation um, uh, on that front. Um, but I would say um, um, the, 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 the other EV names is also playing strong, catching up. BYD has been, um, 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 has been employing more um, R&D uh, personnel last year. And that, that uh, in earlier of this, uh, earlier this year, their tech day, they do talk about moving towards uh, um, in-house um, um, software um, uh, generation. So that's supposed to um, um, uh, that's supposed to be reflected in the next generation product, and they might start it from the high-end uh, models first. So I think everyone is moving because they all understand that Smart EV is the next game changer, and the OEMs who have the scale, who have the in-house software capability, would be the potential winner.